Hey, what's up? 2022 is starting super strong in the budget custom mech world as Keychron just unveiled the Q2, a 65% version of the Q1 they released last year. But it's not just a smaller version of the original Q1. It comes with upgraded switches and stabs, new keycaps, gaskets for the case, and last but not least, a knob. Alright, so let's see what this is all about. So, alongside the keyboard, you get a USB-C to C cable, plus a Type-A adapter. You also get Windows modifiers and additional hardware and gaskets. You should get tools, as well as switch and keycap pullers, but my early unit did not. Physically speaking, it looks very similar to the Q2. Kind of the same design, but without the function row. It has a full anodized aluminum body, and the finish is really good. One interesting difference is that they went for a 6.5 degree typing angle instead of 5.2 like on the Q1. Also, the same brass screws can be found at the bottom to open up the keyboard. In it, one major difference is the silicone gaskets between the top and bottom parts of the case. These help with the sound as it's not directly metal on metal. Then, there's a sheet of lightweight foam at the bottom and the plate assembly can be removed quite easily by disconnecting it from the daughter board. Here, they improved on the Q1 by going with actual wires instead of a ribbon cable, and that's great to see. The daughter board is very compact and houses the USB-C port, as well as the Mac and Windows toggle switch. The plate assembly also has gaskets, and like on the Q1, these are pretty thick and allow for a lot of movement. Then there's a sheet of denser foam between the plate and PCB for additional dampening. The included plate is steel, but there will be other plate materials available, including brass and FR4. The knob is a soldered module, and there's still a switch socket under it, so I guess it's just an add-on during manufacturing, and said sockets are from Gateron and south-facing. Okay, now to the layout. This is a pretty standard 65% layout. It features an exploded arrow key cluster, which isn't too common on budget 65% keyboards, and I don't hate it personally. This keyboard is offered in both NC and ISO layouts, which is cool to see. Replacing keycaps shouldn't be too hard as long as you have one unit bottom right modifiers and a narrow right shift key. The included keycaps are also pretty solid. We're talking about PBT and Double Shot Legends and an OSA profile. That one is new to me and I kind of like it. More than OEM at least. It looks a lot more unique and refined than OEM in my view. I like how the surface is spherical and the fact that it's still a sculptured profile, meaning that rows have a different shape. The legends are not as precise as GMK, but for a set that's included as part of a pre-built, that's a very good value in my view. As for the knob, it is smaller than the GMMK Pro, but still metal and removable. By default, it controls the volume and clicking it triggers the on-off mute setting. It can be reprogrammed too. It's possible to get the keyboard without the knob where you save $10, but I feel like that additional key does look a bit weird given that it's not aligned with the top row. Now to the switches, Keychron went with something new compared to the original Q1. These are Gateron G Pro switches. Not too sure what's up with all the new Gateron variants, but hey, the housings are now clear. In fact, they look like regular Gaterons, and that could be a good thing if you care about LEDs. However, it's hard to tell if these switches are any different than Phantom or Cap switches, as all three of these are sold as switches with better tolerances and factory lubing. Speaking of that lube, it spills on the plate, which I find quite annoying personally, and I still don't understand why these are 3-pin when the PCB supports 5. Anyway, browns were pre-installed and were okay. Blues sounded pingy and felt a bit scratchy to me. But the reds were pretty good. I wouldn't go out of my way to buy these on their own, but as switches that come included, they're great. The stock stabs are decent, but the factory tuning isn't exactly right on my unit. None of the stabilized keys sound exceptional, but a little bit of tuning definitely helps. Worst case, you can always switch to other stabs like the rocks, and that's what I did.
I have to say that the Q2 sounds a lot better than the Q1 stock. The case gaskets and new case foam they added do seem to make a difference in how pingy the board is. Another great aspect of this keyboard is that it's QMK and VIA compatible, super useful to reprogram it. As of the time of filming, the VIA mapping for the Q2 is still under review, so it requires a bit of manual work for it to show up in VIA, but after that, it works as expected. Alright, so sounds like we have a winner here. If you're asking which one to get between the Q2 and the Q1, the layout is really the main thing you should care about here. They're selling for around the same price, and the upgrades as well as the knob are also available on the Q1 with its new updated knob version. I can easily recommend the Q2 for most people, as it takes the vast majority of the boxes one would want in a premium 65% keyboard, especially on a budget. If you don't care about the knob nor the aluminum case, then a KBD67 or Iki68 Aurora would be other options to consider, but realistically, they're not that cheaper either. So yeah, solid keyboard, and Keychron did listen to criticisms regarding the stock sound, and that's nice to see. So that's it for today, hope you enjoyed, feel free to like the video if you did, and I'll see you in the next video.